Freedom Night or Freedom Unit. And, uh, last night, drove up a mountain so that I would wake up almost at the top of it with a view. this way but the sunrise is this way and nothing really to show back set to 35 degrees which is 100 freedom units oh. wonderful right. camera number one comes in Camera number two can stay outside so it stays acclimatised just in case I want to shoot anything else before I leave. out-of-season ferry. Back on the MS Naruna, the Smeral line. And my cabin is 7125. Let's go find it.
Morning, Sea. Welcome to Iceland. This is Seyrisfjörður. I'm sure you recognise it from countless Instagram pictures. This little town is the port that I've arrived in this morning. This little church and this little street are famous, but I'm not hanging around. I need to get on to the Kringvegur, the Route 1, the ring road all the way around Iceland, and get uh, get going clockwise because I've got some things to do. I've got a couple of days to get to Reykjavik, so let's get going. Isn't it awesome? Iceland, up in the North Atlantic, between Greenland, the top of Norway and the UK, easily accessible from Europe and the USA. This place is epic. It's got one of the youngest landscapes in the world because it's constantly changing through geothermal activity. There's just there's earthquakes, there's lava fields, there's volcanoes, there's glaciers, there's geysers, there's everything. Iceland is an incredible country. So here we are on top of the mountain on the way out of uh, Stadisfjordur, on the way to Egostadir, with the passing traffic that's just come from the ferry. This place makes me so happy. Iceland. Iceland and there's a pipe. Hmm. This light is uh, fading fast and I've been driving around the East Fjords navigating my way around the Hringvegur which leaves not a lot of time because the light goes fast. It rises, the sun rises about nine-ish, sets at about half three, four, so I'm going to make a quick pit stop, or I am making a quick pit stop. A very important place that makes it feel like Iceland. And that pipe brings geothermal hot water to that little tub. <laughs> Perfect. Just me. The swimming stuff. And some hot water in the middle of nature. Perfect. So here's the background. Oh, it's just so hot. You can see the bubbles here. The, the water's being pumped in right by my legs. It's not warm. It's really hot. So here's the score. Iceland sits on a fault line. Iceland is literally on the line that divides the European or the Eurasian and the North American tectonic plates. They go straight through the country, or the line rather, goes straight through the country from the Reykjans Peninsula near Reykjavik down in the bottom left hand corner all the way diagonally through to the top right hand corner of the country. And Everything therefore is close to the fault line and therefore is moving all the time and that's why I said before that Iceland is one of the youngest landscapes on the planet. Everything is constantly shifting and evolving and because of that fault line the magma in the, in the under the earth, not in the earth because not all the way down but close to the surface, close to the hard bit, there's magma which is constantly shifting which is erupting at the moment in Klimsvorden which is all the way over there near Reykjavik. I'm near Djupivoga at the moment, which is just over here. So these, oh, this is so nice. So this magma that's under the, uh, under the earth, close to the surface, relative to everywhere else on the earth, 
is heating up water and the water that is stored in pockets or pools underground. Let me shift away from this boiling hot pipe. So what they do in Iceland is they use those underwater pools to drive steam turbines which creates power and along with hydropower and wind power Iceland is therefore running on completely renewable energy. It's the earth and nature that's driving Iceland and this hot water like the hot water that's here is the result of collecting that steam. So some of it just comes up through the earth naturally but some of it where they have power stations is sort of surplus to demand. When the steam drives the turbines the water that's left over is just hot and it's just there and on that basis they have things like the Blue Lagoon. So the Blue Lagoon is the wastewater from a power station but it's hot and it's also full of minerals and silica and that silica is really really good for your skin if you have eczema there's something about the water that comes from the earth here in Iceland with that silica in it that can help if not cure eczema which is pretty cool For me though, I'm just going to sit back and enjoy. It's not so hot when you get out, but your skin is already warm, so it's worth it. You just got to dry off quick. Right, I'll catch you tomorrow. See you later. Team, I know I said I'd see you tomorrow, but I'm at Jokutsalen, which translates to Glacier Lagoon, which is the uh, Iceberg Lagoon here in Iceland. And I'm making a cup of tea down here because the Northern Lights might just be on. They're there on the horizon and the forecast is okay. And the weather forecast is that the clouds are set to clear. But as well as the clouds clearing, along with that will come very, what, what the uh, safe travel to IS website is called extreme wind with hurricane gusts. Do I stay? I think we know the answer. Boom. It's just really, really cold. There was aurora, but it was just lingering on the horizon. It didn't come to me. But you know, there's still time yet. Oh. I've made a quick stop. I don't know if you can see actually. Icebergs. I've made a quick stop at uh, Yokuta and Diamond Beach because, you know, it'd be rude not to. Have a look at Diamond Beach. Tell me what you think. freezing. The wind, the hurricane force wind from last night has hung around. Um, it didn't arrive on time, it arrived late so it's still here. So uh, you see my rosy red cheeks and my nose like Rudolph. Um, I'm absolutely freezing. But the Diamond Beach and Yokutsalen are absolute winners. Um, 
have to come here every time, every single time. Jokutsalen is a, it translates literally to the Glacier Lagoon. Bredemerth's Jokut is the uh, glacier, the glacier, sorry, at the back there where the ice carves off from that glacier to feed the lagoon. Lagoon wasn't here. Um, it, it only sort of emerged in the 30s, but the Route 1, the road around Iceland, hasn't been here all that long, and so it wasn't really an accessible place. It was known only to the farmers. And the people that came through here absolutely hated having to pass this area back in the day before that road existed, because it's a glacial floodplain. All these glaciers, the Vetnjokud um, glacier system, the biggest one in Europe, is is right here. Bredemerjokud is part of that system, and these icebergs. Well, when you look at how clear the water is, or when you look at how clear the ice is, it's because it's been there for hundreds of thousands of years and the weight of the the snow that lands on top gets crushed into ice and all the air comes out it's forced out by the weight of what's sitting on top and therefore there's just clear ice with no bubbles no nothing just crystal clear it's beautiful so it comes off and it sits in the lagoon and bobs around for days months or even years before it exits out into the sea and just melts away good morning team I am at Gyudja, Gyudjau, which is a cave just outside of Vik on the south coast of Iceland, famous for looking just like Yoda. So, <clears throat> excuse me, it's very, very cold. It's raining slash snowing. Uh, so I just quickly need to get dressed and get ready to get out there. And we're gonna go and take some photos inside the cave with the van outside the cave. Let's go. It's a bit grey, it's like cement, so maybe it's not from here. No, it is from here. And that. Well, that's obviously all fallen from somewhere up high. Which is not cool. Right, I'm going to move this one because aesthetically... Here's the situation. There's the van. And this is what makes it the yoga cave. Cool, huh? Right, let's get this camera in. cool shots coming in from here at the uh, Yoda cave and some Spanish people were in that car and um, helped them out with some lighting and then uh, they asked me how to find the Northern Lights so I gave them a, a very fast very detailed guide about how to do that this place is awesome right I'm get the van back in because I moved it out of the way so they could get shots without it
always, always, without fail, reset your tripod when you finish using it so it's ready for the next time at sort of base settings. You will save yourself a lot of time and hassle knowing that everything is exactly as it should be when you pick it up. Alright, let's get out of here and head towards Vik, Vikimedra, which is on the south coast, at the very bottom in the middle of Iceland, and Vik, I'm kind of off-road, I'm not off-road, it is a road, you're not allowed to drive off-road in Iceland, they will fine you heavily, but, let's, uh, anyway, let's get to Vik, which translates to town. Hey, Jeffrey. Okay. This is Jeffrey. Full name is Sir Jafarius Edwardius the First of Um He doesn't like hand sanitizer. If you just sanitize, it's way too humid. Okay. Otherwise, he loves a little head tickle. Oh my ah, God. Actually, um, school beans cafe. It's a it's a school bus, as you can see. Um, I just had a chat with them and um, ended up agreeing to do with them a 360 photo of the inside of their cafe bus. So I'm going to get the 360 camera ready and get that done, and then we're going to head off into Vic. I've just had coffee with Torir and I need to get out of Vic, but I'll very quickly show you what Vic is. So here's the mountain and behind there is Katla Gia Park, which is awesome. Um, loads of volcanic eruptions have left their mark and there are lava fields and all sorts of things. But this is the thing you might recognize Vic for. This church, which is in movies and TV commercials. There's a Netflix series about Iceland and the volcanic eruption where it's all covered in ash and lava flows. And then over here, these things over here are called Reinestranga. And the reason they're called Reinestranga is because of the beach, Reinestfjara. Now, these are said to be trolls. They froze. So trolls don't like the light. And these trolls were out, they walked out from these rocks out to sea and they went to catch some boats that they were going to drag back in and eat the sailors and the fishermen that were on the boats. And they didn't make it back in time and the sun came up and they were petrified and they froze over there. So these, Reinestrangar, are the trolls trying to catch the fishermen, which is pretty cool. Right, rainy, windy, I need to get out of me. Right, there's the van, ready to go. And there's Vic. Which translates, well this is Vic i Myrdra, Myrdal. Vic translates from Icelandic to town. So Vic, the town of Vic means town. Let's get out of here. Here at Renishara which is sometimes known as the Black Sand Beach, but to be honest, every beach on the south coast of Iceland is black, black sand, because it's volcanic, it's ash and rock and ground lava. But anyway, here at Rinistrara, there are stacks, basalt columns. And if you go round the corner towards those sea stacks, the trolls that have been petrified, you'll find a cave. And not many people go around the corner to where this cave is. As you can see, it's me and that person there. So, here's what's interesting. 
if you look carefully you'll see that the basalt columns are hexagonal and the reason they're hexagonal is because they were lava at one point and when they were molten they flowed and they settled here and this cave has obviously been carved out by the sea and the wind and the reason they're hexagonal is because when that lava cools and becomes rock stresses build up within it and the easiest shape that nature can produce to relieve that stress in the form of cracks is hexagons so that's why when you come to Iceland you see hexagonal um, basalt columns and these hexagonal shapes on the floor and in caves that's why it's the easiest way to relieve the stress that's built up in those rocks when you come here you have to be very careful though. just last week somebody lost their life to a sneaker wave um, these waves come up out of nowhere and become very huge and come very high up the shore because of the shape of the nature of, of the ground underneath the sea where the waves crash and it can take people out to sea it happens quite often to be honest it's not cool and there are signs everywhere and people still get too close this person was found washed up two or three days later further along the coast so if you come here watch out for these sneaker waves because they are deadly the beach at Reynesjara which is now quite a long way behind me is at the very bottom of Iceland if you look at it on the map and all the touristy stuff Skogafoss, Seljalandsfoss um, all that sort of stuff is on the southwest coast but I I'm not really able to stop for any of that. If there was phenomenal light, I would stop and take some pictures and show you, but there's not, so I'm not going to. I need to plow on and get myself to Reykjavik um, because I have things to do, people to see, I have things booked. So you'll, you'll thank me, even though I'm not showing you the touristy stuff where all the tour buses go, these are the things you've seen anyway from uh, websites and Facebook and everyone else's pictures. What I'm going to try and show you is the things a little bit off the beaten track. So although we've seen your Anish Fjara, that's because I had to stop in Vik to see Dorir for a coffee and a catch-up. And in the, the rest of this episode, hopefully there'll be something cool, it depends on the weather. And in the next episode, you'll see some epic, epic stuff. So, I'm smashing out the miles on the southwest coast and I will show you what is at the end of this journey and you'll see some even better stuff in the next episode. So for, uh, for today, I'm sorry because you don't get to see Skogafoss and see Landsfoss and uh, Drangonir and all those places but those are the places I'm sure you've seen anyway. Just so you know what I'm looking at I'm just going to spin this camera around for a second. Here is my current view. How epic is that? So yeah, let's see where we end up at the other end of this road. Well this is a like It's like a quite a protected little natural harbour. So the ships would have come in here back in the day, only during the summer, not in the winter. And uh, this lava, all this black rock down here on the shore, this is lava, slopes out quite gradually so they're quite protected when they arrived here. It's a cool, calm little place. I like it. Right further around the coast we're gonna to head towards Reykjavik the capital of Iceland wanna be friends hey 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 nibble 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 Before I go from this lovely little town, this is an Icelandic horse and what makes it Icelandic is a couple of things. Firstly they are purebred, 
they are only in Iceland. If they leave Iceland, they are not allowed back, and no other horse is allowed to come to Iceland. You can see they're quite short, but they're very strong, and they can withstand the crazy temperatures here as well. And what makes this horse so very special is that, well, firstly, it is a horse, not a pony. Don't call them ponies, or they get very, very angry. Don't you? You get angry. Yeah. They have another gait. So where there's a trot and a gallop and a canter, different gaits or different modes or gears, if you like, for horses, these have got an extra one. Because of this weird terrain that's up and down and all over the place. Hi. Hello. Because of this weird terrain, they have another gate. We've got another one coming. Hi. Um, so they've got a, a different kind of walk to be able to walk on this ice and weird lumpy grass. So yeah, Icelandic horses. Make sure you say hi, they're very friendly. When you come into Reykjavik, on the shore is the Solfar or the Sun Voyager. Uh, and the mountain in the background there, that's Mount Esja. At, uh, like a runic Viking or Icelandic rather, runic ship, the Sun Voyager. It's pretty cool. Let's cra crack on. Um, oh, if you want to come here, by the way, it's just down the road from Harpa, the concert hall. Here we are in Reykjavik at Halgrim's Kirkja. After seeing Halgrimmer, I'm at Halgrim's Kirkja. And, uh, this chap behind me is Leifur Eriksson, the discoverer of Vinland, the son of Iceland. He discovered Vinland, the United States, way, way, way before history tells us. Um, I think it's becoming part of the new history, though, that uh, Vinland, the Vikings, discovered Vinland, the United States, before the rest of the European settlers, the Spanish, I think it was. Anyway, Haugrimskerkja, if you look at it, is representative of Iceland. Basalt columns, the northern lights, glaciers, it's all represented in this church here in Reykjavik, the capital. And now, that brings this episode to a close. I've got things to do around here, and uh, in the next episode we'll pick up we're going to do some awesome things, weather dependent, to do with nature, to do with the sky, and then uh, I'm going to head off north to even colder parts of Iceland. At the moment, right here today, it's minus two. So I'm going to leave you right there. Thank you very much for watching. Once in a lifetime, as often as you can. If you want to learn anything more about me, take a look down below the like button and the subscribe button, and you can see everything you want to. I'll catch you next time.